before I even put the mic, the headphones on. So, for 2023 and beyond, I'll be fishing out of a nitro mercury. How about that? We just, uh, we wanted to hop on the pod tonight here, and um, we don't have a guest, but Trey and I want to get on here and talk about uh, the big sponsor change, and 11 years into this, I'm going on my 12th year fishing the Elite Series, especially this past year, we've realized kind of what's valuable, what isn't, what isn't, and how do we make this kind of partnership, media partnership into an actual career and it's taken a while to get to that point what do you mean media partnership so i wanted to have johnny on (laughs) johnny's upstairs editing right now but i wanted to have johnny on in the center here basically um i mean let's face it like if you don't have a camera guy nowadays if you don't have a camera guy following you around recording uh, and documenting everything you're doing, not only on tour, but what you do in between the tour, uh, in between the lakes, in between sponsorship obligations. People are curious as to what you're doing, you know, in your everyday life. And it shows with, you know, the Guggen boys, YouTubers. um, And let's be honest, like, that's what that's what sponsors are looking at nowadays, like view counts and like counts and comments. And, and, and that's just the way I would, fishing is going. I would, I would argue on that one. It's not view counts, likes and comments. It's actual data that shows that someone went and bought the product. And the only way to get the sort of movement you need is through content and like showing exactly what you're using and how you're using it. And to get that detailed, you have to have co- constant content. It can't be just an article here and there like pastimes. And then to get that data, there's got to be a link that they can click or or something you said in that video that only that could move that sort of product movement. And and it's it's much deeper these days than you wearing a logo. I just had that conversation with someone in the industry this morning who represents some of the anglers and does some business things. And, and that was, you know, some, she was, this person's okay with holding out with your name on your boat instead of making another sponsor's logo bigger. And she says, well, if you know your price, then, then, you know, hold out until you get that title deal. And, and I'm, I'm against that. And, and, mainly because I told her that logo doesn't do much for any sponsor said, you know, you holding out on a logo is dumb because I don't care what anyone says you driving down the road with a giant logo on the side of your car (laughs) moves very little product in today's world. There are logos everywhere. We're saturated with logos. And that's what I, I was trying to explain. If you want a title level deal at this point in 2023, it's based off content. And I, I even, I was talking with your longest running sponsor. I'm not going to say who that is, uh, but you know who it is uh, earlier this week. And and they, they who they're entrenched in, they make a very high grade product that is mainly something a tournament angler would want. And they said, YouTube is where it's at. Mm -hmm. That's where our spin's at. They're, They're starting to realize. And that's when I say media partnership. That's that's why I got Trait by my side, and I'm lucky to have her on my side, especially going into business meetings because I, I get to concentrate on the fishing part, you know, the catching the fish, the showing it off to the camera, explaining how I caught this fish, and hopefully, you know, the audience learned something. Uh, but that's only half of it, and, uh, you know, that's why we're hopping on the pod tonight, just her and I, just trying to explain, you know, what's valuable, uh, you know, in 2023 and beyond. And we're fortunate enough to partner with, um, you know, Bass Pro Shops, Nitro, Mercury, and True Timber this year um, and and hopefully bring value to those companies. And what's really cool is is our point of contact over there at, at, at Bass Pro Shops. Well, let's back up a little bit. How this all happened was, you know, one of their longtime staffers, everyone knows him, last name starts with a Z as well, 
he kind of reached out and said, hey, you know, kind of threw a feeler out and said, hey, look, w- would you be interested? This was a couple months back. And, uh, of course, I'm with Skeeter Yamaha at the time and everything. And, and um, my feeling, I'm, tr- I'm, my... Tr- I'm trying to I'm trying to make it sound like I'm not a sponsored jumper. <laughs> and, that, and and here's you know, my before, feeling. Before... If someone reaches out, you should hear them out. You know, yeah. even if you're happy, um, we learned this, uh, you know, he it's not a secret. He left Megabass last year mm-hmm. and we had went so long with not entertaining um, those conversations that when we were having some frustrations in that in that relationship from a business standpoint um, and, and people were like, hey, you know, they had been knocking and it was one of those. Well, just what are you? I'm curious. Tell me. Tell me what's there. And then you're like, whoa. And then the next one, you're like, maybe I should, you know, tell them, you know, we're interested in listening this time. And then you're like, whoa. And you realize that your market value is higher than than what you've been told for a few years. Mm-hmm. And, and that's OK. That that's that's not you sponsor jumping. When Chris has made a move and. I'll be honest, I've pushed him on a few of them. He, he's he been, it, it's tough to leave someone you've been with for a very long time. But whenever it's a drastic difference, something that's going to help you in a major way, you you have to look at it as business. Uh, just because you leave a company doesn't mean you're not loyal. Those circumstances don't work anymore for you. And that's okay because that company is going to get to a position with you at some point where what you're doing for them doesn't work for them anymore. And they're going to, they'll make that call. Yeah. Going on your, you know, going on year 12. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about like the, my peers and all the guys who, who have survived this long, you know, let's call them the decaders. Anyone who's, who's been in this game for a decade or more, uh, you can't name a single one who hasn't changed sponsors throughout major sponsors throughout their career. I can't think of a single one. I'm not just talking about boat brands and engine brands. I'm talking about, you know, where they make their money and, uh, you know, just the landscape of bass fishing. We've had several guests on the podcast up to this point, you know, explain this very concept um, that the landscape of bass fishing is like changing right before our eyes. We go back to, you know, Rick Klun when he was on talking about the split. And we talk about, you know, John B., uh, you know, some of the Googans we've talked to over the past. Look at their success. Um, and, you know, over the last couple of years, Trait and I have really learned a lot, um, both working with the Googan side, who are like the kings and the originals of, of YouTube and fishing content, and then also working with the in-the-industry tournament bass fishermen and tournament bass fishing companies, um, we've learned so much over the last couple of years and, and this move working with, uh, Bass Pro Shops and delivering content for Bass Pro Shops and the new brands we're representing and the old ones. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, it, everything feels right. So, so when, when we talk about like content is king now, um, one of the things that we have a conversation in our house frequently is where is tournament bass fishing heading like is it at its peak is it on a downward trend in 10 years do we have the ability to see some more growth um what is it and and let's say chris's tournament career ends right now something happens and he can't fish anymore what is he going to be left standing with when he is done tournament fishing, let's say in 10 years, what is he going to do then? And the problem with the model that's that we're dealing with on tournament fishing and that you're seeing so many of the older guys clinging to it right now is that you don't have anything for yourself. Bass owns the content you're putting out. Um, you know, if you're not doing something for yourself, then that income stream outside of maybe some royalty deals, which royalty deals can be very lucrative, you don't have anything. So the next step is building a platform that you own, especially when the tournament organizations, in my eyes, aren't really 
living up to what they need to be for for these guys to to make a great living. They're all trying. I mean, I, I'm not saying they're not trying. Yeah. I'm not throwing shade at at the organizations. I'm just saying that because of the reality of what content has done, that in the fishing industry, the organizations aren't the only player anymore. They're up against the Googans mm. and these and then some. Yeah, and, and these other content juggernauts competing for the same money at this point and that's where the bigger money is and that's where the non-endemic money is 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 on the content side and it's good if you can build your content up on that side then you have an income stream that that isn't dictated by how well you fish that day it's kind of nice yeah you know we're speaking to a very you know small if you think about bass fishing i mean it's just a small thing in this giant world that's you know and Again, we're speaking to a lot of tournament fishermen as well. You know, if some of the tournament guys are watching this saying, I, you know, this is foreign to me. This doesn't really make sense. It will in a few years. It definitely will. Like uh, everything Trey had just said, I feel like I'm in a, uh, a business meeting right now with, you know, one of the, uh, you know, pro staff managers or, or marketing managers. And, and she brings up a lot of good points. Um, but like if, if you're a tournament angler and you're watching this and this is, you know, kind of, kind of foreign to, to you, You'll find out in a couple of years, and then those decaders, those guys who have been around a decade or more, they're thinking, you know, they're thinking, yep, that's that's right on. Um, so, you know, we just wanted to hop on here and 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 kind of explain that. Um, but you know, going back to the Skeeter Yamaha thing, there, I was with them for eleven years. I just talked talked to Joanne. Uh, you know, she was she's been my contact lady over at at Skeeter for. For all those 11 years, I just talked to her yesterday. So we left on good terms. Everything was awesome. And that's, you know, I've had some breakups in, in the past. I've left companies because I didn't agree with, with what they were doing. Uh, things either went sour or, you know, just simple disagreements. And like this Skeeter Yamaha breakup was just, it was like completely opposite of all that. It was like the cleanest breakup of, <laughs> of all of them. And, and that's how it should be. It really should. And, um, so yeah, I'm thankful thankful for my time with them. This is such a small industry, and it's you know you're either running Chevy or you're running Ford, period, and and that's how the fishing industry is. You're either running a black motor or a blue motor, and uh, I'm happy to say I've ran both, and I'm really excited moving forward. and And you guys will see more more videos and 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 more content pumped out because of this partnership we just we just spoke about. Um, but, uh, I'm, I, and I'm not going to tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to tell you straight up and, and, you know, upcoming videos on, you know, not on the builds podcast, but, you know, on the Zaldanos channel, I'm not going to tell you, oh, th this Mercury, you know, pro XS four stroke is the best engine because it's the cleanest and it's the quietest and it's the best four stroke out there. I'm never going to say that. I'm not going to say, oh, this nitro is the best bass boat I've ever been in. You'll never see me say that. What you will see me say is let's, let's let's find out together, like hop on my boat, uh, you know, or, you know, Johnny will be filming and I'll say, Oh man, that's a cool little feature. That's, that's really sweet. And I'll highlight it or whatever. And, but I'll never tell you, this is the best go buy this, this and that, like that's, that's not our style whatsoever. Um, but yeah, let's, let's figure it out together. Let's find out together. Is this the best bass boat nitro Z 21 XL? Is this the best engine out there? I don't know. We'll find out together. It'll be fun. Um, and the other thing is a part of the, what you'll see coming out is, um, Bass Pro and Black Rifle have a very strong relationship. Mm -hmm. Chris has been with Black Rifle for the last few yes. years. We really like the group over there. We're getting, uh, to learn more and more. Uh, our contact is moving up the ladder over there as well, which is cool. Um, and they're partnered with Bass Pro. So that, that's a easy alignment. It, it makes an environment where we can all work together, where we can do content that makes both sides happy. True Timber is a part of that that element too. So um for you younger anglers out there, that's a big key. Like if you have that synergy between brands, it's hard to do. Uh the Skeeter Yamaha thing is a good example of that. Uh they have synergy. One owns the other. So it's it's naturally they work together and they uplift each other. Same thing with this trio we've come up with here. Uh you know uh, black rifle, uh, you know, nitro mercury bass pro shops, true timber. I mean, they all work together. So, um, it's, it's a lot like NASCAR traits, a big NASCAR fan. And, and they have, they have that, that, uh, that nice synergy working together and, and, uh, you know, you all just kind of uplift each other and, and ride, ride or die as a team. So 
And I think that's what bass fishing needs more of, like a team, like a team style. Like old school FLW days when, you know, back when Walmart was backing it and all the Procter and Gamble and Walmart brands were dumping money into these teams. I feel like it was mismanaged a little bit how they selected the anglers. There was a lot of politics involved. Um, but just going off of stats and who that, per that angler is as a person, um, I think they need to go back to like fishing teams. I mean, that, that would really create, how did we get talking about fishing? I don't teams? know. I don't know. We're freestyling. I love it. You're freestyling. <laughs> I've got, see, she keeps me a check. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, you were saying how you have had some breakups in the past and, and this this definitely isn't one this is just we've been talking about it. people have seen you dabble with johnny and content mm -hmm. and there just wasn't a commitment for us to to do that johnny deserves to be paid yeah, yeah. and so we've constantly been trying to find that right partner who understands the 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 next step for us and and for chris what he's trying to do and and I don't care what anyone says, like Bass Pro, Bass Pro Shops, Johnny Morris has done more for this industry than any company from a conservation standpoint, from supporting all the tours out there, mm -hmm. um, for being someone who's partnered with Toyota and keeping them here. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's gotten that, what little mainstream we can claim is from Bass Pro Shops. Yeah. You see his logo everywhere, and um, and it's an, it, I I thought it was an honor when they reached out. I, I honestly didn't think that anything would come to fruition. Um, I told Chris we'll shoot our shot. Um, we'll tell them what what we're looking for, and hear them out and what they're looking for. And and I don't think we really thought it anything was going to happen of it. And and then it. That's what we told Skeeter and Yamaha too when we you know we explained that. And I, first of all, I feel. <clears throat> like just privileged to even have that opportunity that someone's knocking on your it's 2023 we're coming off like banner years of fishing tackle and outdoor retail sales right fishing hunting gun you know gun industry Not all that this past year though it's kind of and now we're in this kind of, and uh, you know everyone in the industry will say it uh you know it's kind of a covid hangover where everyone's taking a look back like oh we're sitting on a bunch more product this year is it going to move People are tightening up on spending. Uh, we saw it with the gas prices. Economy's obviously so, slowing down. So what's going to happen? But, you know, the end of 22, start of 23, I mean, just someone knocking on my door uh, after 12, you know, going on year 12, I mean, that's just a heck of a privilege. And it's, it's, um, it's, I feel lucky to even be there. Yeah. And, and I'm going to chime in on the business side. And it goes back to the conversation I was having with someone in the industry this morning. Um, a lot of anglers are talking about they're getting cut and demoted mm -hmm. and, and how bad it is right We're now. We're hearing that now, sure. Um, and I'm not tooting Chris's horn or anything, but he hasn't really seen that. And, and this is what why I'll say, and it's not just Chris. There's a handful of guys who can attest to this. If you're not focusing on that content side, you're getting left behind. Those deals are still there. Yeah. Don't... Uh, Chris is someone who'll be like, oh, it's so bad just to like not like interrupt the mood. I'm someone that's like, why don't you stop them and say the deals are still there. The doors are still opening. People are still reaching out. Current sponsors are still upping what I'm making every year. But he's focusing on content and doing what he can when he can. And that's unfortunately where we're at. If you just want to go fishing and and that's all you want to do that's great but don't ask why the deals aren't coming to you you know and then this day and age we've been with uh you know rob turkla a good friend of ours we've been you know we've been partners with the guggen squad boys for a couple of years now and i have to say like their work work ethic and i say it in our videos all the time their work ethic is just off the freaking charts off the charts and after hanging out with them, you know, after a couple of years, especially this past week, we had a Guggen week in Florida. You know, I drove from Texas to Florida just to hang out with them for a few days. And they cranked out a dozen videos. I don't know. I mean, they work so freaking hard, you know, three, four, five videos in a day. And then 10 p.m., 11 p.m., they're out there shooting a podcast. Like, they are getting content out now. 
And that's why they're so valuable. And that's why the tournament bass fisherman is sitting back on his heels like, oh, when's my next tournament? That may or may not be an opportunity for me to showcase my brand if I get on Bass Live, you know? Got yeah. a one in 90 chance of getting on Bass Live. It's not like that. And I constantly, and for all the tournament guys out there or just someone trying to make it in bass fishing, I, I, I ask yourself this. And I've been doing it like, I haven't told her this, like I've been doing this like every morning I wake up or as I go to bed because of how hard those Guggen guys work. I see it with my own eyes. And it's not just the Guggens, it's any content creator out there in the fishing space, in the outdoor space. You got to ask yourself, like, am I working hard enough? Can I work harder? Like you have to literally ask yourself that. And here lately, I mean, I'm, I'm completely exhausted. Like over the last four or five days, it, I, I think I've had a camera for my face the last four or five days. So I'm, I feel like I'm working hard enough on that side, but there's still this whole tournament getting ready for the season. My garage was a disaster. Uh, there's home life, family life, all that stuff. But you know, am I working hard enough and can I work harder? And the answer is usually no, yes, or yes, no. You know, but and, uh, what I never understood with the complaint uh, from elite anglers on doing the content and doing more, and you know, maybe I'm wrong for saying this is you guys have what 10 tournaments a year, mm -hmm. so that's 10 weeks plus travel, so add another what four weeks to the mix, 14 weeks, and it's a 52 week year. Mm -hmm. Any other person is having to bust their rear to make a paid check all year, 52 weeks. Mm -hmm. Maybe they get a couple weeks vacation. So I've never understood why on the bass fishing side, the tournament side, where all those other weeks go. No, don't get me wrong. Y'all got to organize some tackle and stuff. But, hey, I've been around a lot of industries. They got to organize things too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't – I it – it bugs me, you know, I don't, I don't get any more that I should just get paid for, <laughs> for my 10 weeks of service to this world, you know, and it's, and those 10 weeks aren't always on Bass Life. It's kind of weird too, because like, and you guys all, I mean, mo most of the viewers on this, on the, the Build Podcast channel here, most of the viewers watch Bass Live, they pay attention to Bassmaster.com. It's crazy how when September comes around, September, October, like, and myself included, like everyone's social media, including, you know, the tournament organization, social media and, and content pump out just like plummets, dude. Like mm -hmm. everyone's either hunting, which is fine, which is fine. But it's just so crazy how tournament bass fishermen is on the clock hard from February to, you know, what? late august mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's just phew, but, gone but, like gone you lose touch with your yeah. with your followers but it's those crazy companies thing. still need to make money Heck, from august to december yeah, yeah. I, i've had uh with several of your sponsors who have said or asked me are you guys hunters because we still need some sort of content mm -hmm. during the slowdown and um and so you have to look at I don't think anglers, and I don't blame it. You know, when the split happened, I always said, gosh, anglers are just anglers. That was the biggest apparent that anglers aren't businessmen to me. And I'm not, I fish, but I more understand the business side. And I think everyone gets that, you know, I'm not the best angler. But one thing that I don't, I don't um, think anglers do is truly think about that person writing you a check. And the ROI that they need to get off of you. So let's just say you get a $10,000 sponsorship from a jig company. That means they need to not only sell $10,000 in jigs, they actually need to sell more than that. They need to make money off of you, not mm -hmm. just come out even. And because that's 10 grand that they're, they're not going, plus product, right? So for anglers, I just wish that more anglers would, and I don't know how I got here, my brain, I've been packing all day, <laughs> but that you guys would think more about the person writing that check. And if your fishing isn't getting them an ROI, you're not on Bass Alive a lot, 
I can promise you that logo on your jersey isn't selling the jigs for them. So then what are you doing? And and if you want bigger sponsorships, it's not the economy right now. Yes, the economy is slowing, but the opportunities have been there. And it's not the split that's causing those opportunities not to be there because they'll they are still there. I promise you, I get emails and calls a lot. So there's it's the landscape's different and it's content and that's what's forced Chris to make decisions. It's part of why he had to leave Megabass. It's not the whole story. There's definitely more more parts to it, but we knew his time had to be spent doing content that was on his platform. And you know what's crazy? I just thought about I had a guy reach out to me. It, it Okay, so I've been, you know, I've been rocking the nitro like here locally in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I've been rocking a demo nitro like they I literally went to a Cabela's here in Fort Worth and they they literally picked one off the showroom floor and said, "Okay, you could you could film." We went to OH Ivy, you know, a couple weeks ago out of it. And uh, I actually had a guy come up to me at the gas station down there, you know, at one of the lakes and told me and I, like I had like I didn't think I never thought like a someone would buy a bass boat, a $70,000 bass boat, like because of me, like I never, ever thought that. And like, sure as heck, this guy said, dude, I bought the, you know, he was like, dude, why are you in a nitro boat? And maybe he was just pulling my chain. He's probably just pulling my chain. But he was like, yeah, this, this FXR, I bought it because of you. I'm a fan of yours and this and that. And I literally love the boat and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I think he was just pulling my chain. But it's crazy, like the power of, uh, not the power, but it's crazy how, I mean, like, I, I remember what it was like when I was a fan watching some of the, the Western guys grow up, uh, you know, like I, I emulated them to a T, like I wanted that rod, that reel, you know, and I don't look at it that way anymore, but I guess it translates to bass boats too. Pretty crazy. Yeah. I think just getting the word out on bass boats, I, I'm like, I'm not sponsored by Nitro. Our household, you know, is, but you know, I've, I've, for whatever reason, there's always been some stigma when it come to nitro boats i'll yeah, say it. what's up with that and i'll look in this camera and tell you i am beyond impressed with this boat i'm sort of being paid to say this because i'm you know with whatever but then i'm not um and that's something i'm excited about is the opportunity um there are a lot of good boats out there um there's i, I feel like the the main brands are all right there with each other and um, there are things on this Nitro from an OCD layout standpoint that I'm like, oh, it's huge. Why, why haven't, why did we never see I'll this? I'll tell you why, because Kevin Van Dam has been with Nitro for, what, 20 years, 30 years, whatever it is. Yeah. And he is, obviously, I mean, he's won so much and he's dominated so much and he's probably spent more time, more hours on the water than anyone out there competing. He knows what he wants. He knows what he wants, and he gives him the input. He's been giving him the input for years and years and years. So that's how you you come to a 2022, 2023, you know, Z21 XL. Uh, just yesterday, fun fact, uh, you know, when this comes out, uh, it'll be a couple of days from now, but just here over the weekend, we're getting ready for the season. Um, I had that boat at my riggers place. Um, and the, you know, this it's Texas boat works in, in, uh, in Dallas, Fort Worth. These guys are phenomenal. They, they've seen them all. They've seen the Phoenixes. They've seen the baskets. They've seen all of them, Rangers, Skeeters, they rig everything. And I think this was the second nitro they've had come through. Um, and they, they had it rigged out in a whole, in one day. It was, it was amazing. Um, they literally said, and, and, you know, one of the owners comes in and like, he starts digging around for about an hour. And then, you know, I walk in, he's like, Chris, he goes, he goes, do those, do those nitro guys, do they treat the pros, uh, you know, specially? Like, do they make your boats? Do they spend extra time on your boats? And I go, I don't think so. Just literally came off the line. I mean, th this boat came off the line. I was like, why? And he goes, dude, this thing is built well. Like the screw holes, they all line up. You know, there's like, there's little inserts. Okay, so most bass boats will get, you know, take a screw and screw through a windshield into the fiberglass. So every time you take that windshield off, and this is just a small example, 
every time you take the windshield off, that screw kind of hollows out that fiberglass hole, right? Because that's, you know, stainless steel in fiberglass. That fiberglass is going to give. Nitro actually puts these, these rivets, these brass inserts inside the fiberglass, not going anywhere, not stripping out. And then, you know, they just have a regular threaded, uh, threaded screw that's, that screws right into that, that rivet. So, I mean, that's just one example of, of, you know, why Troy, you know, one of the owners of, of this rigging company says, man, like, do they got, do they treat you guys special? I'm like, no, that thing just came right off the line. Here's the sheet on it. And I just, you know, I was just like a regular customer. So, you know, that, uh, that that says a lot. Yep. So, uh, so th- there are sponsorship changes. Everything happened smooth this year. Um, late. It happened late, but with, I mean that's. Every, I mean everything happened late. We we just started talking to them late. Uh, you know. <laughs> My <laughs> the Skeeter Yamaha that I ordered. I think you know this. Didn't I tell you this? The Skeeter yeah. Yamaha I ordered. You know I ordered it late and. Um, it came in. It was ready for me to pick up. I wasn't quite ready for me to pick it up from the factory. It ended up going to one of the uh, one of the tour guys. One of the new guys. And I'll guys. say it later. One yeah. of the new guys. And I'll I'll say who who's yeah who it went to later. He'll probably win one this year, and I get to go up to him and say, "Oh, this is a lucky boat. I ordered it." Uh, anyways, I think there's only one thing left to talk about on tonight's uh, podcast, and this is the Bilge podcast, which means if you guys haven't figured it out yet, the Bilge. The bilge is an area of the boat where everything goes to. Like if you drop a plastic worm down, if you drop a tungsten weight, if you drop a, a coin, a quarter, a uh, chapstick, you know, at some point or another, all these things end up in the bilge. So this is the bilge, and it's in the back of our Battleborn RV, and all this stuff is powered um, off of Battleborn batteries, which is really cool. So if you didn't know that, that's why we call it the bilge. She came up with it. That's a really good idea. So wait, 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 in the bilge, reverse. You told me it was a terrible name, and you did not want it. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. Uh, and Battleborn loves it. We all love it, right? <clears throat> but we all, the whole goal uh, of this podcast is just to talk about everything. A little bit of professional, you know, professional life, uh, business. Um, you know, we like, we like here in the dirt, we had Matt Heron on and he got into some dirt. We got in some gray area there. We talked to John B. We actually filmed one with another, uh, another person who came in so hot that, that, uh, we have to redo it. He called um, us the next morning and said, uh, I don't want people to think that I was all jacked out. But you'll like, you'll like it when, when yeah. we come back. Uh, he did, he did good when, when we got there, but he came in firing hot and it probably would not be perceived the way it should, you know. He wanted to do over, and and we agreed. So yeah, we like talking about uh, a lot on here, and and also too, if you know, you guys like commenting, and um, if you guys have any guests in mind, or if you guys have any people in mind that uh, that you would like to see sitting here in the middle of the Bilge podcast, comment down below on uh, on who you'd like to see. So but, it could be anyone, any well, anyone fishing it, related. It can be anyone, but this is. If you don't see certain people on here or here's the thing, it's really hard to do. I've tried to watch fishing podcasts. There are a lot of boring people in fishing and it's not that they're boring, but they won't open up and talk. They try to be too PC. Mm-hmm. I I don't have time for that. Mm-hmm. If, if you're going to come on here and try to control a narrative and be PC and and be this person for the audience, you know, outside mm. of who we know you as. Not the podcast uh, for you. This, That's why we have yeah. lawn chairs. We want to yeah. make it feel like you're hanging with the boys and girl. So I tried like heck to get Johnny on the podcast. And Johnny, of course, you've, you've seen him. His Instagram is Johnny Z trying to go places. Well, we are trying to Johnny's make, our camera guy. He's our camera guy. We're trying to help Johnny Z go places. And that's kind of, you know, going full circle here. You know, when we were talking with Bass Pro Shops, when we were talking with the, the man in the marketing department, we just want all of us to rise up together. We want the brands to, we're partnered with to rise up. We want, you know, her and I to rise up. We want our camera guy to rise up. 
And the only way to do that is by keeping, plain and simple, is by keeping Johnny funded. I mean, that man holds a camera for eight hours a day in, you know, in waves, zooming in and out, getting seasick and, and whatnot. Oh, and, and he's got his little dog with him this year. He's got a little Aussie dog. But th these boys work hard. Like yeah. all the camera guys in the industry. Yeah, and there's lot, only a few of them. Yeah, a lot of the content guys do not make a lot. And, and that's something, um, this dude's cheap over here. Yeah. I'm not. Um and my thing is, I see it, what they work. I do some of that stuff. I'm trying to learn more and more of it. You're editing this podcast right yeah. when we get off of it. And so for me, um, I know what they go through. And we want Johnny. Johnny deserves. He's just a big part of the vision we have of, of what we want to do and how we want to scale things as Chris is. Without Chris, Johnny can't do the content he does. Chris can't do the content without Johnny. They're both very good at what they do, and it's a great partnership. And then to have someone like a Bass Pro Shops and a Black Rifle say, we believe in you guys. You know, we we hear that vision. We like what you're saying. Let's let's try and do this together. That's big, you know. And, and one thing I'll say, you can't just make any content and something that I've – me and Johnny really vibe about and, and we've talked to Chris about is we don't need to do content or anything unless we're going to bring value to the industry, to our viewers and add something. Uh, we don't need the hero shots 24 uh, seven. This isn't about just making Chris Saldane, whatever. This is about how can we help the industry move forward? How can we help fishing? What can we add that is missing? Where's there a void? What do people want to see? What will help them? What do they need to see? And um, and so this isn't just us, you know, vomiting content everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, we really care about what we're putting out. Uh, and I think as the year progresses and we we understand more where we're headed, uh, it'll make sense. Um yeah, I'm dipping into the you know the vlog stuff, which is which is tough because I you know. You know, one of the one of the Guggen boys told me a long time ago before we even hooked up with them. It's like you got to let people into your everyday life. Like that is like the whole key. Well, for professional bass fishermen, our our lives are pretty boring. It's just fishing, 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 and pe I feel like people get sick of that. I mean, some people may like that, especially when you're catching them. It's awesome, but like the in between, like the fighting that you know that occurs with me and her. Yeah, maybe you won't see a lot of fighting, but you know you're gonna see what we do. Uh, with our dogs and the hunting and you know these these off the water adventures you're gonna see a lot of that this year because of what we're allowed to do the budget's kind of opened up johnny is happy you know her and i are happy we're going to be traveling along in the battleborn rv all over the country so we're definitely going to open up a lot more to you guys um but yeah the bilge podcast is going to be exactly what it has been and we're going to have you know spicy guests on and that's what we're all about um, you know, the guests that who come on here, you know, hands on their hips, you know, politically correct. I mean, that's boring to us, especially on the Bilge podcast. It's cool on the tournament stage and everything like that. That's great. That's awesome. I, I've got nothing against that because I'm that guy. Um, but here on the Bilge podcast, you guys are going to have a lot of spice this year. And, and, and we think, we believe that's what the sport needs. And that, yeah, and that's part of some of these sponsorship changes that you're seeing uh, is partnering with people that, maybe aren't so buttoned up themselves. There aren't, when you sign that contract, 9,000 pages of what you can't do, can't say how you have to be, blah, blah, blah. You know, just we want to show you sides that you don't get to see of anglers. Uh, we've, I've always said, you know, there are a lot of things that happen at tournaments that the public has no clue. And if we can talk about those, because... For whatever reason, everyone else in the industry wants to sweep them under the rug and act like it didn't happen. You know, that's something y'all deserve to know. You know, that's one of my favorite things about NASCAR is I feel like there's some transparency a little bit. And I'd like to bring that to fishing if we can. And uh, maybe it does come with some drama, but it's the reality, you know, uh, and, and it gives y'all a, a clue into why people are changing sponsorships or things are going on. You know, there's. There's a lot more things that go on. Things are a lot deeper than than what our industry in the past has painted them as. And uh, and I think 
that's part of what's missing in our industry is, is that depth and that, that transparency and being okay with saying, this is how it went down. It wasn't pretty. Uh, things aren't pretty right now. Th this is messy. Uh, and talk about it. I, I think, uh, I think it, it's a good thing. So, yeah. So just to put a bow on all that and just to wrap things up here tonight, uh, you know, over the last what, seven, eight years? I think I was on the very first Bass Live episode on the California Delta, like in 2014, 15, 15, something like that. Yeah, when 14. I caught a 12-pounder on camera. Uh, 14. Ever since then, you know, I've kind of, I really, and I've never really talked about this on camera, but um, I, I like being the, the how-to guy, like, okay, how I did it. Okay, th these are the conditions in front of me, and I like to just just regurgitate it all day long to my camera guy. The how to, how to, how to, but here we are, eight, nine, ten years later. Um, I know what you know after partnering with the Googans again. You know, I, I keep saying that, um, but people just want to be entertained, like in any way, shape, or form. That's just how people are. I mean, think about it. You wake up, you watching this right now, you wake up and one of the first things you do is scroll your phone, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, any other social media sites. Most of you do that. So people just nowadays just want to be entertained. So again, this year with, you know, the new partners with Johnny uh, full time, we want to mix in the how to's. We want to mix in the vlogs. But more importantly, we just want to entertain in every way possible. So with that, I think we covered everything tonight. New sponsorships. Uh, this is she did a great job of explaining, you know, what's on our mind tonight. And uh, buckle up because 2023 is going to be a media filled, content filled year. Um, yeah, and, like um, we leave officially for the road in like eight hours or something. Yeah, ten hours. I'm worn out. I've been up since four a.m packing and dropping off boats. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've been up since 4 a.m.? She got up at 4. I got up at 4.30. No, I got up at 3.45. She had to text me to get <laughs> yeah. Well, you were snoozing. And yeah. Yeah. Let's see. this guy. All right. With that, uh, we're out of here. Uh, we like to kind of end, well, we're going to try to uh, end every Build podcast episode with some life advice. So, Trey, hit them with some life advice. Life advice. I'm not good. Uh, I'm sure I pissed a few anglers off with uh, my advice. Uh, life advice. Adapt. Uh, don't be stuck in whatever used to do, used to be cool, used to make things happen, like in fishing. Like, if the model has changed and you still want the money that came with the old model, but the model's changed, then you need to adapt and you've got to change how you're doing things. And you could be mad at that all you want, but you can't ask for the bigger sponsorships if you're not going to adapt. Everything in life changes, and you've got to pivot. You, ha you have to come to that point where either you want to keep doing this, you want to keep fishing and being a part of it, so you make that pivot, or you get left behind. That's, that's good advice, and that's not only fishing, but that's everyday life. And I will end it with, uh, again, I'll touch back on this. And this is this just applies to me just because I'm a professional bass fisherman. I'm doing this thing full time, uh, but any in any business, any industry, or any uh, you know, this applies to anyone. Again, it's are you working hard enough, and can you work harder? Ask yourself that. Am I working hard enough, and can I work harder? I think you can work harder. There you have it. I'm gonna go work harder. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done for the actually I gotta go pack up. All right. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us. All right.